Hi guys, it's Keith Larkenberg Farms. This is uh, third video out of three on building the Caterpillar Tunnel I'm currently standing in. It's uh, 40 foot long, 20 foot wide, Gothic style, cool carport connectors up top. But today, I'm gonna be showing you how we build out this Ray Tyler style end wall for the Caterpillar Tunnel. It's really nice and simple. I think you'll like it. So let me show you. So the design is pretty simple. Piece of plastic over the end, piece of channel, wiggle wire coming down from the top, actually offset from the side of the peak here, comes all the way down. And then we got a piece driven into the ground, a bolt through. And over here on this side, just have a flap. I might end up putting a piece of channel and wiggle wire out later. Let's see how it performs this winter type that Ray Tyler uses on all his tunnels and it performs just fine where he's at but we have a little bit more extreme winters so just pull it down bunch of sandbags there that's how you hold it in place now one thing to note is this overlaps this way that way is north our strong winds come out of the north and blow across so they'll blow across here and not go into that flap right there. And that's why I have the sturdier pull here. So when it's open, we won't have to worry about this other side wanting to jump away. But let me show you how I build it. Now to start with, I come over about two inches from my connector, place my piece of track, make two marks, one on both sides of it, and that's where I'll meet up top. Now, put a level on it, and I want to plumb it down to the ground. So we'll plumb this way. And this way. Doesn't have to be perfect, just needs to be close. There we go. Now, I'll just push down slightly. Now give me a mark in the ground. There we go. Now we'll move down to the ground. Okay, so I'll have my track coming down this wall back will be here the front where you put the wire in is on the outside so next normally what I would do was to take this one and put the back up to it as well that way I can put a bolt through through and use a uh, wing nut to tighten it the washer on the outside but since the bolts I got are too short I'm going to flip it so it's going to be this way so I've got the back and back both facing the same direction so my tracks going out both sides so now this one I will be able to put a bolt through the back and it'll come out here and then the one up top that will move will bolt through here and that way my nut is sticking towards the inside and I won't have to worry about it getting caught on the plastic on the outside as well so I'm gonna go ahead and drive this down as far as I want right next to the mark I made initially And I'll cut off the excess that I do not need afterwards. Try to get a good foot or so on the ground. Straighten it up. And I only want, oh, I don't know, maybe a foot sticking out of the ground at most. 
So I'll go ahead and cut the rest of that off. The reason I don't want too much sticking up out of the ground is because the more of this up out of the ground, the more chance of the plastic around it to baffle on it and shred the ends of it. Now, for cutting it, a pair of tin snips. Pretty easy. Make one cut, go over the other side, make the other cut, you bend it back, and you cut through the center. There we go. It's as simple as that. Now, I'll get the upright ready to bolt on. Now that I have my bottom pin in place, I'll hold it up an inch and a half off the ground, height the two by four. I'll line it up with my marks up here, and then I will drill it. I'm gonna to try to drill right in the dead center of my hoop and in the center of the track. I'm using a quarter inch drill bit because my bolts are a quarter inch. I'm just gonna drill through. Now I got my hole drilled through, line up my bolt again, and now I'll be able to cut this off. And where I'm looking for marking to cut off is about a half inch above this bolt. I basically want to be at the top of my hoop, but not the top of my wiggle wire track on this outside hoop. So that way I have enough meat to work with. So on the top here, carriage bolt through see about height those cut off at come back around the other side wing nut that way I can easily tighten it loosen it take it off what have you now we're gonna come down to the bottom we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna drill a hole through here and here and then on this we're going to use bolt and then we're gonna put nut where my thumb is and we'll use wing nut to hold this into place afterwards. So, gonna drill our hole. That's through both pieces. Move our upper one off to the side. Use our Smaller carriage bolt, go through from the back, washer, nut, and we're going to tighten that down until snug. There we go. So now, we've got our bolt sticking through. Once this is done, we'll bring our track over. And then we got our wing nut that will secure this wall in place. Just a reminder, this wall will be that way, even though we're this side of the center. It's kind of confusing, but it's just something you gotta note. So, now we're on to the plastic. So now we've got our piece of track secured at the bottom and up the top. Now our plastic's gonna come from this side because again, south breeze will be this way, so this will be the one in the back and then our other flap will come from clear over here and go over in front of it and that'll be the north breeze. The flap come this way will not have a piece of tr track and wiggle wire like this one. This one this way does because when I want to vent it, I will just take this side and open it up. And if we have north wind, I'll have a rigid pole in the middle so it keeps this wall taunt and doesn't want to flap the whole thing open. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, tighten it 
time lap this and get this on here. Okay, got it done. Now, I'll show you the three basic setups on this. We have setup number one, solid in wall, winter, no venting. It's a flap again, coming out of the north. Sandbags on the bottom of the flap, holding it in place. Now, we got setup number two, vented, which would be the flap, up on both ends of the tunnel. Very important in winter to vent. That way you don't have excess moisture and excess disease in your crop. So even when it's cold outside, you still have to vent for at least a couple hours a day to let the excess moisture out. So to secure my flap in place, just tuck it underneath the rope on the cat tunnel. Got it tucked underneath, did it a second time to secure it. You can always get a clamp and clamp it up later if I need to. I don't know. We'll just kind of see how it works. But so far that works pretty good. Okay. Now here's setup three. Fully vented. Open from end to end. So down at this end, I just raise the bar up. Tuck underneath. And I'm going to get some spring clamps. Clamp it on there too. So, stuck a spring clamp on right above where the arch is. That's about the closest I can get it because it tensions itself down to the base right here. Did the same thing over here. That way, even on the windiest days, I don't have to worry about it. Well, hope you all like what you saw here today and thought it was useful. And also, don't forget, this is the third part in a three-part series on the building of this caterpillar tunnel so check those out and don't forget to like and subscribe thank y'all have a good day